Hey, so I figured out this way to build muscle like a lot faster. And um, I actually stopped doing it fully because it made my biceps look kind of weird and bulbous. <laughs> um, but, but what it is, is you figure out how to fully contract each muscle. So sometimes the muscle fibers will not 100% engage and you need to figure out the angles for each muscle and the position mechanically that your muscle needs to be in. And then also the neurological connection to figure out how can I make this muscle as hard as I can possibly make it. My biceps aren't like that now. They're back to normal. This is probably like three or four years ago. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, is you can grow muscle so much faster when you figure that out. And, and I was literally just standing in front of a mirror, squeezing my biceps as hard as I could. And I would just hold them fully squeezed. I was not timing myself, but it was probably in between two and three minutes. And it was probably, you know, I was going to say a 10 out of 10 discomfort. It probably wasn't a 10 discomfort, but it was very uncomfortable and very difficult. It was so tempting to just let it relax a little bit and don't keep it squeezing quite as hard. But if just if you can get through that process, like it'll grow really quickly. And you can actually, depending on the type of contraction, the, the exact position, you know, of your arms, you can actually grow muscle and have it have it be shaped differently because you're emphasizing different parts of the muscle and then that extra emphasis is going to apply more stimulation to that section of the muscle and make that one section grow so when you get really good at it you can actually if you're into like aesthetics and proportions you can actually like shape how your body wants it sounds a little weird but you can shape how your body how you want your body to be just based on where you put the emphasis on that full contraction. You can also do it in the gym too. And that's something that's often overlooked with people that think you need to lift really heavy. And by the way, lifting heavy some of the time can be extremely beneficial um, because it allows your medium lifts to get heavier and, and get stronger and therefore put more you know force into the muscles. But you literally do not need a gym. You can build muscle without, without a gym. Um, without any equipment, just by learning how to squeeze each muscles. Um, and I actually take people through that process. So if you're interested, there's a link down below. You can click on it and sign up. I can show you how to build it really quick and, and also help you get healthier in the process. The other thing is that you need to eat more protein. Like there's been times where I was eating so much protein, my muscles were just like twitching and I had to go to the gym. It was, it was, it was, it was really weird. It was like, sorry about the lighting. It's just getting dark. I'm sitting by a window here. Um, it, it's just, uh, like when there's that's that excess protein, for some reason, for me, it just makes me like, I just need to like squeeze those muscles. And when I don't have enough protein, when I don't have enough water and electrolytes and just food in general, I don't have the energy. I guess this is obvious maybe, but maybe not. It's overlooked a lot of the time. I don't have like the, the energy to actually like build that muscle, you know? So making sure you have had enough food, of course you've had enough rest and sleep, maybe using cold water to recover. Um, oftentimes like a couple of days ago, um, my nervous system felt like it actually needed like a, you know, like a deload week, like maybe like a week or two off of just like not really doing any muscle stimulation. And I, I got in the ocean, like super cold ocean, probably high forties, uh, ocean and just kind of dunked under and stayed under for a while, you know, up to my neck and dunked my head under and stuff. And then afterwards I had so much energy and I just like felt like I was super excited and ready to go to the gym. And I just did like a little gym workout. So that cold water can be super, you know, energizing. Um, Okay, so as long as you're well fed, well rested, you've had enough sleep, um, and your nervous system has recovered from previous lifting activities. So make sure that your nervous system has fully recovered to the point where not only have your muscles recovered, but they've also grown from the previous lifting activities. Sometimes people need to take literally weeks off. Um, although you'll probably need less time off if you're doing what I was describing and eating enough food and, and using cold water and all that. Um, but yeah, make sure you're like fully rested and your muscles are like just like itching to get in the gym or, or to, 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 you know, to do it at home. And then again, you squeeze that 100%. And what can work well is that you just squeeze it. And it does not look impressive, by the way. Like to the untrained eye, you probably couldn't even tell the difference. I even had a video of making a funny expression on the thumbnail, like showing the neck. And it actually doesn't, I mean, it's just, it looks kind of lame, right? It's just like, oh, what, what the fuck's this guy doing, right? Like you can't, I mean, it doesn't look impressive at all but the thing is is what you couldn't see were like on the trip on the upper traps for example is that they're fully activating and then when you keep that full activation for a long period of time it's going to make it grow it's like lifting a really heavy weight but it's actually a lot easier on the nervous system which is another side benefit of doing it without weight is you can when you learn how to do this correctly you can get so much stimulation into the muscles 
and it's so much easier on the nervous system that you can actually recover and come back and do it again. Therefore, you don't need to be taking supplements or, you know, synthetic enhancements and you can still grow a lot of muscle, you know, quickly, really quickly, way faster than you, than you, than you probably thought possible. If, if, if you have all your ducks in a row and you got these, these pieces all lined up, um, it is like a recipe where you have to learn, you know, how much of what to do when and, and sequence things together. So it does take a lot of skill, I guess you could say, in order to sequence that correctly. But once you get it locked in and you have this kind of like warm up phase, like you're all prepared, like we're talking about, like I mentioned earlier, and then you have this kind of warm up phase where you're just like finding the muscle. I'm just practicing. You can't see it on camera, but I'm doing it with my bice my left biceps right now. And you define the angle. And then once you find the angle, it's like, oh, you know what? I don't actually feel like squeezing it harder. And this is actually part of the key to make it grow faster. So listen up. If you were kind of partially spacing out, listen up. This is important. People try to force and push through it. And what that does is it exhausts the nervous system and makes it harder for you to recover. And then you have to rely on these other things for you to recover faster. These non-natural things, I mean. So if you don't force it, what'll happen is like there'll be a space that opens up that allows for a greater expansion of the muscle. Contraction of the muscle results in that bigger expansion and more growth, right? So equal and opposite reaction. You're contracting the muscle into the bone like a boa constrictor squeezing around the bone and the equal and opposite reaction, boom, it, it expands, right? It's growing, right? There's a neurological growth and complexification that happens, a development that happens where it's a more sophisticated neurological connections in the muscle tissue that allow for that greater degree of, you could call it hypertrophy, but it's not all about how big it is. It's about shaping it in such a way that there's a coherence there where you can move more like an animal and you have a natural fluid strength as you're moving that that where you're not experiencing pain and your hormones are gushing and you feel strong and powerful and energized. And there's like this effortlessness where it's just like, whoa, like you don't feel like you're trying really hard. Or you're trying to be that guy, but other people around you are saying like, whoa, like you're looking like amazing. Like, what have you been doing? You like almost don't even notice that anything is going on while you're moving. It's just like an effortless thing, you know, like a, like a gorilla or something or um, a jaguar. So a lion maybe, um, so there's this warm up phase, and if you don't force it, right now my muscles have had enough, so I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't actually fully do the workout right now, but when you're ready, like I'm describing, when it's ready, the muscle will then go, it'll expand more, and it's like, okay, don't go, don't push it though, stop there, let it, let it have some time, and then when it's ready, okay, now you've got space and room, and again, this takes skill to be able to recognize like the timing on this stuff, how hard to push it for how long and when to push it that, that hard for. It's like absolutely critical. And that's the reason why people don't get that good of results because they're not discerning these micro nuances and details and they don't know when they're just going by some program of some person said to do this. Or even if the person knew what they were doing, they're not you know, truly listening to their body of how much to do when. And when you optimize these like fine-tuned details, including like how you're resting and, and ways to recover more quickly and more completely, that's when you start to see results that are going to separate from you from the crowd and make you on a whole another level where people are like, what are you doing? Like, tell me what you're doing. <laughs> you're looking fucking amazing. You know, and someone that's in their 70s, like looks like they're in their 40s, right? It's like, whoa, what is this? What are you doing? What are you doing here? So waiting until there's almost like an invitation for the muscle to squeeze harder, then you squeeze harder. And then there's more of an expansion. So let's say it just goes to Let's say you push it a little too far on the expansion. So then you just relax just a little bit, like another 10, 15%. Okay, maybe another 2%, leave it there. Let that hold for a while. Okay, now boom, now it's ready to go truly 100% activation. Keep that 100% activation now. So then you just keep squeezing it. Keep your focus there. This is why you need to be well prepared. You're continuing to focus and you're 100% committed to growing this muscle in the way that's best for you, at the angle that's best for you. And you just keep growing it one part of the muscle can get tired. So for example, on that biceps activation, you know, the short head, like the, the lateral head, you could call it, um, if you wanted to, that, the outer head of the biceps, that might get kind of mostly work and you can switch more emphasis onto the inner head. So if one part of the muscle gets tired, you can actually switch to another part and emphasize that more until you've kind of cooked the whole muscle, almost like you're cooking a hot dog or something where you're like rotating it around the fire <laughs> not continually rotating in this context with the muscles though maybe that's not the best metaphor because you want to really squeeze and fully cook that one that one section before you know moving on to the next section um and then you keep squeezing it you keep squeezing it, you keep squeezing it with this without weight it's really difficult to go into what i would call strain where it's actually 
harming your body in a, in a, in a very can, like a kind of a subtle way. It's, it's easy to go into strain, like with lifting weights where people push it too far. Cause they think that's, what's going to get them results. But all it does is break their body down. Even if it gets them results short, short term, they're either going to have to rely on synthetic enhancements or, you know, two, five, 10, 20 years down the road, there's going to be major consequences with their body. And they're going to regret doing that injuries and joints breaking down the nervous system, falling apart, diseases, um, et cetera. So not worth it. So with, when you're doing it without weights like this, it's really hard to go into strain. You're probably not going to be able to handle mentally. Maybe you can taking it all the way <laughs> to strain, but if you just keep, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And this is why you need a lot of electrolytes in a form your body can absorb a lot. Make sure your electrolytes aren't synthetic too. Um, just mineral salt, um, raw fruits and vegetables, you know, fulvic acid, F-U-L-V-I-C, get, get the real ones, you know, uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice in your water, etc. cetera. Um, then you have the energy to fully expand that and you'll feel when you've had enough. It's like, okay, the hot dog's cooked and then you go to the next muscle. And, you, and on these ones, you don't even necessarily need to rest in between quote unquote sets. You can just go to the next muscle. So say you did just the left biceps, now you can switch to the right or you can do them both at the same time either way. You might find benefits of each. I find it can be really helpful to actually stand in front of a mirror and do it in front of a mirror um, because you can see a lot of like nuance there. Um, and um, the other thing is make sure you're relaxed. Whew, I'm not super relaxed right now, but before you get into it, make sure that you're calm, which I'm not right now, but that's okay. And relaxed and, and you're kind of like primed and ready to go and then start easy. You know, like you're, like you're warming up first. You're kind of getting in the groove, finding the angles, just like relaxing, wait, waiting till you're ready. And again, there's like almost an invitation from the body to, okay, now I'm ready, but wait till you really are. And then now I'm ready to squeeze harder and therefore expand the muscle more. You can go through all the major muscles in the body and you can figure out the angles for each one to fully develop them. And also another cool thing about this, again, going back to balance or and or aesthetics is if you have one muscle that's like lagging behind that you don't have good genetics on and you just can't get it to develop. I promise you that's bullshit. You can get it to develop no matter what your genetics are. If you're a human being with muscle and you have the ability to contract it and you have your needs met in the way I was describing earlier and you have your rest dialed in and all that and you're relaxed and you're focused, you can get it to develop because it is forced to develop. When you activate it in the way that I'm describing that 100% every last single muscle fiber, if you think of a Christmas tree, all the lights on the Christmas tree on, not some of the lights dimmed out, but 100% of the lights, not a lot of people are getting 100% activation throughout their entire body on all their different muscles. Or, or are even able to perceive if they are themselves or to see other people and perceive if they are. So I can look at your muscle and say, that's a 90% activate, approximately 90%. That's a 97%. That's a 42%. And, and I can help you go through the process of getting it to the point where it is 100%. And again, you can do it in the way I'm describing, just by sitting around squeezing it, or you can apply it to your gym workouts too, right? Um, also, when your muscles are more activated in that well, in that way, they'll be worked better just from day to day life too, because they'll be firing more completely when you're just moving around, around like living your living your life, getting more circulation, um, more fluidity in your movement. Um, but the point is, you can go through each muscle and you can get it to develop in the way that you want it to if you activate it like that. So, say your calves are lacking we can figure out or you can figure out on your own how to get that full activation. And if you hold it long enough and you do it in the sequence that I'm describing, you know, when the timing is key, right? When and for how long and how hard to push it and in what way to push it, what angle, which part of the muscle to emphasize how you're prepared and what your mental focus is like and, and your intention and your openness, your degree of openness to allowing this process to happen and not being limited by some study or some idea or belief that you have and just allowing the process to happen and unfold in the way that's most beneficial to you. If you're open fully to maximum benefits, you're going to walk a different path and you're going to stand out in a way that's extremely positive and you're going to be an example for other people and show them what's possible in terms of, you know, bringing that level of vitality coursing through your veins where it's like, whoa, what is going on with this guy or girl, right? So do that or let me know. There's a link in the description below and I'll help you do that.